Hello and um, good evening. And um, firstly, thank you uh, for taking your precious time to uh, join us this evening and to listen to our presentation. Um, all about Peggy's Beach Road in Woolacoo. Um, so it's a delightful um, family home situated in a great spot uh, close to all of the um, amenities there in Woolacoo and the lovely views down the valley towards the beach. Um, so um, the presentation today will probably last for uh, probably about three quarters of an hour to an hour. Uh, we've got quite a lot of information to get through and um, to present to you today. There's a lot there at Peggy's to see and understand. And um, using the wonders of technology, uh, we'll be able to walk you through the property as if you're there. Um, so I've got a brief agenda that I'd just like to um, get up onto the screen for you, if I may. Um, It'll just uh, just give you a bit more of an idea of uh, you know what we're trying to cover today. Um, so if I could just grab that one up a second, um, and then I'll be able to uh, show you what we're planning to do here. Um, good. Right. So that should uh, show you our uh, agenda now for the day. Um, so yeah, uh, there's the introduction, that's me. Um, so I'm Lee Hustle, I'm the director at Weathers Estate Agents and Weathers Fine and Country. And as I say, we're here today just to talk about Peggy's Beach Road, Woolacoon. So um, first up, I'll give you a brief overview of Peggy's um, and uh, we can just tell you a little bit more about what a characterful and versatile home it is. Um, there is a little studio building as well, which is part of the um, property, which gives it an extra dimension. So all on that in a second. Um, we've got an aerial location video that we can show you, so that will give you a good idea as to how the property sits in the wider landscape and its proximity to the village and the beach. And then we'll do our main part of the presentation, which is our guided internal walkthrough tour. So as I say, using the wonders of technology, I can walk you around the inside of the property as if you're there. Um, we can then have a wander through the delightful gardens um, and the studio building. Now, the gardens amount to uh, about an acre. So there's a lot to there's a lot to see there. There's lots of little um, nooks and crannies within the garden, outbuildings, and uh, different areas that you can explore. The studio, as well as I say, gives another dimension there and so potential for the working from home scenario and also some conversion potential subject to any planning permission. Um, the local area, so Willacombe and all the surrounds in North Devon, um, there's plenty to offer here. So we'll give you a little bit more information about the wider local area. And then, um, you know, Woolacombe is an area where holiday letting is, you know, very, very popular. So as an added um, bonus there, we'll give you some figures on potential holiday let incomes. Um, so it'll be a short session on that part. And then if there are any questions and answers, please do feel free to fire them at us. Now, you can fire them at us during the presentation, actually, um, because we can take questions by you typing uh, those questions in. So um, if you feel that you want to ask a question, you know, don't hold back, ask it straight away. And my colleague will uh, hopefully be able to uh, prompt me if I miss seeing that on the screen. If not, we'll deal with those at the end of the question and answers session. So um, we'll go straight into the presentation and a brief overview of Peggy's and uh, showing what a characterful, versatile home it is. So there it is. Uh, that is Peggy's. Um, it sits in a lovely uh, tree-lined setting, um, as you'll see, and uh, it's in just under an acre of garden, um, about 0.89 acres to be precise. Now there's a little bit of history to this property in that um, well-known local architect, a guy called Lawrence T. Dale, um, bought the land in the 1920s. And he had it um, specifically uh, built and designed to his specification. And um, it was in like a Devon longhouse sort of style, very much in the arts and crafts mold, um, very sort of popular in that period. And um, the house was, very much designed with the sea views in mind, so it's annotated towards you know the views down the valley out towards the sea there. Now, in 1932, um, Lawrence T. Dale did sell the property um, to a Mrs. Woolen, um, and since then it's been within the same family's ownership. Now, the current owner, the actual current occupant, um, he holidayed there for many many years as a small child, and really fell in love with Peggy's and Woolacoon you know, as a location, and uh, he bought it from his father's cousin 40 years ago. So this is the first time for 40 years that the property has actually been on the market. 
So, um, as I say, the uh, house itself sits in the wider landscape with those fantastic views right the way down the valley. So uh, that is the view you have more or less from the house. So you're looking down over the surrounding countryside, you've got the glorious two and a half miles uh, of golden sand beach there at Woolacoon, which is famous throughout the UK, um, very popular with the surfing community. And you've got the views across the bay towards Dundee Island in the distance there. So it really is a smashing um, outlook there. Um, there's this fantastic terrace that stretches across the back of the property, which enjoys those views. Pack flow character, um, you know, it's an older style property. There's lots of period charm throughout. And when we do the guided walkthrough tour in a second, you'll get a better feel for exactly um, what the property has on offer. Um, the conservatory is a great addition, and you can see the fantastic view down the valley in the background there. The studio building, as I say, adds another dimension. It's not just um, a large shed or anything like that at all. It's a wooden framed building, um, but uh, it's used at the moment for the owner's business purposes. Uh, and there's a series of three different rooms in there, but uh, there's a lot of other potential and versatility that uh, that part of the uh, property offers. So again, more on that in uh, later in the presentation. The gardens surround the property, provide a fantastic screen, lots and lots of privacy. Uh, and there's wider areas for kids to run around in, kick the football, explore, build dens, all the things they may want to do. It's a real haven for wildlife, actually, the garden. Uh, there's lots of birds, there's lots of sort of rare plants, mature trees of lots and lots of different um, species and varieties. Um, there's, there's small animals kept within the gardens, there's chickens. Um, so there's all sorts of scope and potential for the gardens to be used for whatever you know, you as a new owner would want to use it for. Finally, there's some phenomenal sunsets to be enjoyed from that terrace I showed you a second ago. So you'll just see Baggy Point off on the left hand side there and just the way the bay lights up uh, as if it's on fire, bright red there. So it really is a, a, a sort of a fantastic position and a fantastic spot. So that's a brief overview of the property. And um, the next item on our agenda is the um, sort of aerial location video. So uh, what I'll do, I'll just get that one set up now for us. And I can share my screen to sort of play that one for you. So uh, it, it's only just over a minute long. So this will give you an idea of where Peggy sits in the wider landscape. There we are. Um, I'm sure you agree it's a pretty fabulous location there. And you can see uh, you know, in the video um, how close the village is. It's um, just a short walk down through the valley to the uh, village shops, um, the beach, which is obviously the big attraction. And there's loads of um, really lovely walking in and around the Woolacoon area. Um, the Southwest Coastal Footpath um, is uh, part and parcel of those uh, lovely walks and things. So, uh, you know, you certainly won't be disappointed with the uh, location there. So we want to jump on now to um, the main part of the um, presentation, which is the, uh, you know, the walkthrough tour. Um, so um, what I shall do is just try and cue that one up for you. Um, and then we can jump into that straight away and I can give you, as I say, the guided tour around the property. So there we are, using the wonders of technology, we are now stood inside um, Peggy's hallway, uh, which is great. So we've uh, we come in through the front door. There we are, and we're in the hallway here. Um, 
So um, the property is quite versatile in its setup. There is an annex area to the property, which I will show you a little bit later. Um, let me just reverse down through here. It's like my screen's on a little bit of a delay at the moment. So let's just get back to where we were there. Right, okay. So just looking down through the corridor here, the annex area is down at the end of that corridor. There's a separate door which closes that off. We'll walk down that way in a minute, but I'll show you um, primarily the main house first. As you'll see, there's a dining room through there. And just as you come in to the hallway on the uh, right-hand side there, you've got a separate ground floor cloakroom. Let's go through into the dining room. Um, the sort of the characterful room. It's, it's very much a Devon Longhouse style property, this. So you've got lots of rooms that are all adjacent to one another. You see the old range in the recess there, which is uh, you know, quite a nice feature. Um, just adds a bit of character to the property. Now, um, the range is something that the owners do want to take with them, but uh, certainly the scope to pop another one of a similar nature back in there, if that's what somebody wants to do. Um, it just gives a nice uh, addition to the property. You see the kitchen off on the right-hand side there. Uh, we'll take this one first out into the conservatory, actually. So we've got the sliding doors from the dining room out into the conservatory. And the conservatory is a good size, plenty of room for sofa there, it's, um, tables and chairs. We've got the double doors out on the left here, which goes out onto the nice terrace. Now the terrace then stretches right across the rear of the house and provides a great place for a alfresco meal or um, drink of an evening or early morning breakfast, um, a great place to look at the views and watch those fabulous sunsets. Obviously views down the valley there towards the sea and out over the rugged coastline. Now the owners have chosen to keep um, a lot of the trees, you know, where they're positioned uh, within the garden um, and some might say well actually it does sort of uh, block out some of the view. Now, there are no preservation orders or anything like that with any of these trees and those trees can be thinned back and paired off a little bit just to open up the view a bit further. But as I say, the owners have been there for 40 years, they're very used to seeing the sea, uh, and uh, you know it's not something that's, that's immediately high on their agenda, but certainly easily to uh, be cut back a little bit there to open up that view a little bit further. Um, the view is still really good from the house, so please don't uh, think it's not. Let's move into the kitchen now. So you can see all the um, fitted units going around on all sides of the kitchen. Um, you know, nice sort of wooden work surfaces there. You've got the integrated appliances, as you see, there's an oven there. And there's a recess there for a big upright fridge freezer. And we've got the hob and the extractor built in as well. We've got the deep glazed sink down at the far end there. And uh, coming for a dishwasher also just down this end here. Um, but again, great views, you know, down the valley from the sink. Um, now you've got a dishwasher that you can use to wash your dishes, but if you are washing the dishes, it's not a bad view to. Uh, have a look at there. I'll just give you the aspect from this side of the room as well. So looking back up towards the uh, oven end of the kitchen. So moving through, we've done the layout of the uh, dining room, sorry, the conservatory and the kitchen. This is a separate little sort of sitting room area here. Now uh, you notice this fantastic floor, uh, this lovely sort of thin uh, planked floor. Now this goes right the way through this little sitting room here into the main lounge area, which we're going to go into in a second. There are two staircases which will take you up to the upper floor. This is the primary um, staircase up onto the main landing here. And then you've got this lovely sort of dado panelling as well around the wall. So lots of character and charm with this property. Uh, views obviously from this elevation down over the valley towards the sea again. Um, we're into the main lounge area here now. And again, it's the continuation of that really lovely wooden floor. And then you've got these lovely big tall windows at the rear, which take full advantage of those views, especially this uh, nice bay window here, which overlooks the terrace down over the gardens and out across the sea. And uh, you know, this time of the year, winter time, it's a bit cold and chilly, you get the log burner roaring away, you know, really cozy, nice room to come and sit in and enjoy while that log burner is roaring away there. You've got plenty of stock of uh, logs within your garden there as well, as you'll see a little bit later when we show you around the grounds. Uh, just covered there on the right hand side. Um, so there's the main lounge. Uh, one final look from this end of the room before we disappear and head upstairs. Actually, we won't head upstairs just yet. Um, we'll go 
No, we will head upstairs. I'll come back down around the annex area afterwards just to keep the continuity there because we'll, we'll show you all the main house first. That makes sense. So we're heading upstairs. Yeah, so we're up onto the main landing here. You've got that nice sort of game, sort of almost Art Deco style, but it is Art Deco uh, balustrade there. Various bedrooms off um, from the uh, hallway here. Uh, main bedroom up at this end. This is the biggest of the uh, bedrooms here. I'm going to start down the opposite end, so then we can go down the secondary staircase and we'll do the full loop back into the annex area. Um, so as I spin around to this way, that's just looking back down the hall look. So in here, we've got a toilet and hand basin. So that's separate from uh, the bathroom. Um, quite a smallish room, so not quite so easy to show you exactly um, that. Oh, sorry, I don't want to make you all dizzy here. So yes, toilet in there. And then we've got uh, a bathroom here. So we've got bath and hand basin. Little uh, shower attachment over the top of the bath there as well. Just a cupboard sitting in above the bath there. Uh, and then we've got a series of uh, bedrooms here. And all of the bedrooms uh, have got nice views down the valley. You look out towards the sea here. Um, now, that door there just looks like a built in wardrobe, but it's actually a really big um, eaves storage cupboard. There is a lot of space beyond that door. And uh, you could potentially convert that into an ensuite bathroom or open it up and just make more space in the bedroom itself. It's really sort of personal choice. Um, as I say, views down the valley and out over the gardens there. But you can see there's a double bed in this room. And there's a slightly smaller bedroom in here, uh, which is currently used as a little sort of sewing room or a little hobby room type of thing. This room here, combined with the room just the other side of this wall, this is just a partition, uh, was once upon a time, I believe, um, you know, one larger room. So it could easily be opened up again. But again, personal choice of the owners, they use this as just a little working area for their hobbies. Um, but, um, you know, there's lots of scope to change that if you want to. As I say, it's personal choice. Hello, where are we going now? Right, another bedroom in here. So as I say, this could be opened up, you know, through that partition wall and combine that sewing room um, into this room. Well, it's not a bad size, this room, incidentally. Um, and again, you've got the views from the window down over the valley. And then we've got the main bedroom in here. So the main bedroom's actually got a working fireplace within it. Now, the working fireplace isn't really um, ever used, but uh, it could be used. That's uh, just in behind there, or above that brick grate. And the bed is sort of cleverly positioned, so you've got views from the bed directly through that dormer window and directly down the valley out towards the sea and the coastline there. That tree that you see in the middle there is on your land, so it uh, could be trimmed, as I say, if you want to. Now, you notice a door here. This goes out to the secondary staircase, there it is, down over, um, which uh, goes down to sort of the little annex style area. But you've got this sort of eaves storage space here, which again, is just used for storage at the minute. But it could be utilised and, and gate opened up and then brought into the room. It could be a little suite area or something along those lines if you wanted to. You could fit in this area above the stairs here if you didn't want the secondary staircase. Um, again, it's just purely personal choice as to how you want to set this up. Going down the stairs here, we come to this little side lobby. Now, the side lobby does give independent access um, to this little annex area. Now, we've done a full circle. We're back downstairs now. And this is the little annex area that I referred to that was at the end of the, the initial sort of hallway that we walked into at the start of the tour. So it gives you a, a, a biggish, well, it is a big uh, bedroom area here, a nice big double room. You'll see there's plenty of furniture and things in here. And again, lovely old wooden floor. So you can access from the side here completely independently from the main part of the house. So if it wanted to be a little self contained unit, it could be. What you've then got is this um, ensuite shower room. So you've got a shower there, you've got a basin and a toilet. So this little area was self contained. So if you've got guests coming to stay, it's a good little guest suite. If you had an elderly or a dependent relative, 
it's a great area for them to sort of be able to come and uh, use because it's on the ground floor. There's no stairs to contend with. There's the bedroom area, there's the laboratory area, and you could have separate independent access, as I say. And furthermore to that, there is this little sort of kitchenette unit as well to make it into almost a little self-contained unit. So possibility for Airbnb here or, or, or a similar scenario, you know, holiday letting this particular section of the property would bring you in a nice little supplementary income maybe during the summer months. So there's versatility here in its setup, as I say, dual family occupation, holiday let, um, teenage kids perhaps would be good um, for that sort of area. They could have their own independent space. So as a family home, it works really nicely. We'll back out now into the hallway for the main house, um, just this little lobby area here, um, nice little space for coats and shoes and boots and things like that. And then we'll back down the hallway here uh, and back to where we started. So there we are, back out to where we started at the beginning of the tour. Now that's the um, inside of the property. Um, I will just um, flip out into sort of the floor plan here just to give you a bit of an idea as to how the accommodation links together. So we started here, all the way across the back, we came into the dining room, went into the conservatory, went off to the kitchen, we came into the sitting room in the middle, moved on to the lounge area here, uh, where the nice bay window and the views are. We then came um, out and up the main staircase and we went up to the first floor. Um, and the first floor then had various bedrooms along here, main bedroom on the end. We had a bathroom and separate toilet. And then we went down the secondary stairs and back to the uh, ground floor again. So there we are, back in the lounge. So that concludes the internal uh, tour of Peggy's. Um, and what I want to do now is uh, we can take you out and show you the outside space. Now, the outside space is a very key, important part of the property. And actually, there's probably more to see outside because there are so many nooks and crannies throughout the garden. Um, you've got the studio building and you've got various outbuildings throughout the garden. You've got the chicken coop and you've got lots of trees, bushes, shrubs. Um, it's a real treat for garden and uh, it can be utilised in a variety of different ways. Great for kids, great for animals. Um, and whatever use you want to uh, have. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to set up um, the video where we show you around um, externally. So you just bear with me one second while I uh, just deal with that. Uh, okay, so there we go. Um, I will now give you a guided tour of the outside areas of the property and the studio. We'll walk around the gardens first. And then we'll go into the studio at the end. Now, this um, part of the uh, tour, because it is quite big gardens, there's a lot to walk around. It was about a 20 minute uh, presentation. So I'll play that for you now. OK, so um, you've seen the inside of uh, Peggy's. I now wanted to show you the outside and the studio building. Now, um, there's all sorts of different elements to this property. Um, the inside obviously is part and parcel, but externally you've got the grounds of best part of an acre. And you've also got the studio building as well, which could be used for a variety of different purposes. Um, it could be a, a great little place for home working. It could convert potentially, subject to any planning, into an Airbnb style unit or a small annex as well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to wander around um, all of the outside spaces um, and show you all of the little nooks and crannies, the outbuildings, and everything that uh, the rest of this property has to offer. So. Uh, Let's get cracking now. So here we are, we're up roadside and uh, we're just gonna walk now down through uh, the front garden uh, of the property. Now you've got this little pedestrian um, access way down through here. And in a second, I'll show you where you've got the um, further vehicular access as well, because there is another access from the side. But the house is um, tremendously well screened here from the main road and the, uh, the access point. You know, you even struggle to see the house from the top of the garden here. Um, the um, acre of uh, ground, or just under an acre of ground that the property has, really does provide that screen. Um, and there's a plethora of trees, shrubs, bushes, plants, and all manner of different species of vegetation that uh, is throughout the garden here. The gardens are a real treat, to be honest, um, and there are lots of little areas that you can explore, sit in, enjoy, 
and just relax down, you know, next to the sea. So as we walk down through here, this is, as I say, the front garden area. So there's a couple of greenhouses here. And I particularly love this really old um, concrete framed greenhouse here. Um, quite an uh, unusual shape. And then you've got the more modern greenhouse that sort of sits alongside it here. So great for growing your, your veggies or if you're cultivating plants and things like that. You know, there's lots of things that you can uh, do and enjoy here. Now that's the studio building just ahead of us there. Um, and the studio has got um, a huge number of different uh, options and, and uh, ways of utilising that building. I'll show you more of the studio um, in a bit. So I'll just pan round back to where we've come from. So the pathway leads down from uh, the gateway there through the front garden area. And as I said earlier, there's a variety of shrubs, trees, bushes, plants here to enjoy. So again, walking down then towards the house now. Um, as I say, very well stocked throughout. Gardens obviously don't look great in January. We are in January, um, so there's not uh, huge amounts of green here, but spring is starting to spring um, already. We've got lovely blue sky and sunshine today, as you'll see in these shots. There's the studio building again there, and the access point up to it. Um, before we head down towards the house, I'm going to nip around this side whilst we're here, because as I said to you a second ago, there's lots of different areas that you can explore around uh, the house here. And this is where the, um, the chickens live. Now, obviously the chickens um, don't come with the property, they're going with the owner, but you'll see the chicken coop in here. And, um, you know, if you wanted to keep chickens yourself, then obviously you can. Um, they're great layers. I can see a couple of eggs uh, in the uh, chicken house there now. Now the, um, unit here, the, the, the sort of the ship's container style unit there, that's um, storage and that would be part and parcel of the property. You'll see the front boundary fence up there and the boundary sort of goes a little way out sort of beyond the storage unit there um, and out to its final sort of uh, boundary edge as we go down the right hand side here. Now this is a veggie garden here, uh, this has all just been dug over, so a great spot for growing all sorts of different things here. So as I say, the garden has got a variety of different uses. You've got your more formal areas that you can sit in and enjoy, which I'll show you in a second more around the back. But you've also got a lot of areas to grow and, um, you know, cultivate plants, grow vegetables, you know, keep the chickens. So um, the gardens, you know, can be whatever you want them to be. There's a huge amount of privacy, as we've said as well before, from the um, screening that you get right the way around the house. So let's head down now towards the actual house itself. Um, it's um, architect designed this house, um, you know, built, built and uh, designed by a quite a famous architect actually. Um, and um, you know, it's got a very unique design. Um, now as we head down towards the house here, there is the other um, entrance way that I mentioned earlier. Now this is the back of the garage here. Um, and you'll see the gate there out onto a parking area. Just before we go out there, I want to show you this lovely front door. Um, you've got the little uh, apex sitting above that door there, but that stonework and that lovely arch-shaped front door there is really quite attractive. And then we're looking across the uh, remainder of the front of the house here. So coming around, sun streaming now, which is great. We'll go back out through the gate and I'll just show you the car parking area and the uh, entrance to the garage here as well. So as you'll see, there are currently two cars uh, here and another one around the corner. So you have got parking off-road for at least three cars, as is ably demonstrated, and then you've got the access to the garage there. So the garage sits uh, adjacent to the car parking spaces. Now there's a little side access road that comes down off of Beach Road. That's it there. So that's looking back up towards Beach Road. And that will give you your access to your car parking. The lane continues on down through the valley there. But there's the access to the car parking there and the garage area. So as I say, you see the two cars and the third one off to the left, along with the garage just off to the right there. Now we've come back uh, across to the front of the house from the car parking area. And uh, I just wanted to show you the um, very useful little utility room and store. Um, so this is part of uh, the house itself. It is sort of uh, tucked on the front here. 
and you've got this access point into you know what is a really useful sort of boot room storeroom utility room um, the uh, boiler is in the corner there as well just under those boxes there um, but really handy little area just for practical things you know it's a big garden here to look after so you need somewhere to keep a lot of your tools and your kit now there's lots of other workshops and sheds throughout the garden area as well but that's a really useful little spot just to uh, keep all the uh, washing and things separate and boots shoes coats all of those things as I say again just panning around so you can see where we are house there studio up there now we're going to head down around uh, the side now there's another little outbuilding here that you'll see um, so this is a, just again a useful sort of storage area, a little shed in there. Um, there's various ones dotted around the gardens as we go. Now we are down alongside the right hand boundary here. Um, we've got a very good fenced uh, screen, uh, sorry, hedge there that provides the screen. And then as we just head up this way, there's just like a log store area. So for the wood burner that you uh, saw earlier, uh, in the house you've got somewhere to keep some of your wood and various bits here and cut it all up ready for uh, fueling that fantastic log burner for those lovely cozy um, autumn and winter nights uh, snuggled up by the wood burner there so we head down the side and uh, as we come down the side here you'll start to see the view open up in the distance there so you know lovely views down through the valley that will never change you know you'll always have the countryside and the seaside you get the best of both worlds here so i'll just head through this gate now so we just come through that gateway there then we're on the other side of that now and um, we're heading down through the gardens um, you notice the bird box there so lots of birds and wildlife through the garden again it's um, like almost having your own little park area as you go down through the gardens here you'll see this um, pathway which is cut through the garden here and there's lots of little um, pathways which spring off of this one as well and you can meander your way through the trees and the shrubs and the plants and all of the different bits and bobs that the property offers we're not going to go left yet I'll take you back up towards the house a little bit later uh, but we're going to explore more of the bottom end of the garden first and we're going to head down this way towards um, another useful storage shed here um, so you've just got this uh, little pathway which wanders down through here so there we are another little um, storage shed there so there's a mower in there and it's just a useful space for all sorts of uh, again different tools and things that you may need um, another area where there could be another chicken run uh, as well any other small animals for that matter so there we are we're looking back up towards the house there just through the trees quite a nice shot of the property and um, we continue on down now through to the lower end of the garden uh, the boundary kicks out you know way beyond there so it's quite wide from side to side now this um, lower plot of garden area here um, was purchased separately from uh, the main plot this was an additional parcel of land which is one of the reasons why it's got such a big expanse of ground you know 0.89 acres very nearly an acre um, of you know really lovely garden area another outbuilding there show you that one again in a second but we're going to head down to the bottom end of the garden here now nice mature trees here on the left hand side which provide again a nice screen and you see um, this big level lawn deck, or not level, but gently sloping lawned area um, that uh, opens up um, and perfect area for kids to run around in, you know, make their, um, their bases within the trees, their little dens. Um, it would be a kid's paradise, this. So perfect for the family market. Um, but equally, you know, there's lots of other scope and potential to do more down at this end of the garden as well, depending on what your preference to use the garden um, for being so again you'll see lots of mature trees shrubs and bushes and um, as I say we continue on down through so we can go down through these other little pathways here to the very bottom boundary now we're quite a distance from the house here so it just gives you an idea of how big this garden area actually is um, 
So you'll just see the fencing on the right hand side and around the bottom boundary here. So we're right down at the bottom of the garden now more or less and we're just backing on to open farmland here um, and then obviously you've just got the expanse of the valley down towards the sea that you can just see through the trees there and there you are look you've got your seat down at the bottom to enjoy that fantastic view now there we are look you can't even see the house from down the bottom of the garden that's how far away we are from it so um, you know it really is a lovely big uh, garden for a variety of different interests and pursuits. So we'll head back up now towards the other big outbuilding we saw and also the rear terrace. So here's the final part of our tour of the garden and um, we'll start off with this um, really lovely outbuilding that um, you saw probably in a slightly earlier shot when we were wandering down through the garden. Um, it's a really decent building this and um, you know there's an area of sort of decking around the building, there's another area for um, you know logs and things like that again. Um, lots of natural supply of logs of course in your garden here with all of the wood and things that you've got around. Uh, that's looking back down the garden towards the bottom end of the valley again. So uh, as we just pan around here now this building could be used as a workshop, it could be used for storage, it could be used for all manner of different uh, pursuits. Um, I'll just head back again over this way a bit just to give you an idea. So there we are. Decent building up to the apex there, so there's a little bit of storage up in the uh, roof area and there's light and power and everything in there. So, um, you know, if you want to come out and tinker and make things or, uh, you know, a bit of a man cave, I suppose, um, or a woman cave, you know, we can't say man cave, I suppose, anymore. Um, could be uh, anything that anybody wants it to be in there. I'll just show you this final area through here. Now we have sort of headed down this way. That's one of the sheds that uh, we showed you earlier. So we're just on the other side of that now and that's a pathway which again links back around uh, up towards the studio side of the building. So as we go up to our final part of the garden we're going up back up towards the house again now and um, you'll see in a second we've got a fantastic uh, terrace that stretches right the way across the rear of the house. Um, now, before we get there, there's again a plethora of more shrubs, bushes, plants, trees, things starting to come into flower now. As I say, spring is starting to spring. Um, and uh, things will start to get a lot more colourful from here on inwards. Um, buying a property like this, this time of the year, or agreeing to buy it, hopefully means that completion would take place sort of spring, early summer, that sort of time frame. So a great time to be thinking about moving. Um, just panning across the back of the house there you see the conservatory and again you've got other little areas of pathway which spring off and dart down through the remainder of the garden. So up round towards the house again, got this lovely old uh, cladding on there as well and this terrace area stretches as I say right the way across uh, the rear of the building. Now you can um, directly access that from the conservatory. So the conservatory is a great space because obviously when you're in the conservatory you're just looking straight down the valley at the, at the view there. Uh, it's a great place to come and sit out and enjoy. Uh, whether that's morning, afternoon or evening you can enjoy a meal out here, a afternoon or evening drink, whatever you want to do. So nice terrace here, plenty of room for sun loungers, table and chairs, um, whatever it is you fancy doing out in the garden here. So I'll just give you a look down over again. Views there as well. And um, just before we finish, that uh, gateway there goes back through out to the car parking area that we showed you earlier. So there we are, that's pretty much now our guided tour of the external areas at Peggy's. So here we are up outside the studio building now and the studio um, could be used for a variety of different purposes. Now at present um, the three rooms inside the building are used as um, treatment rooms for the owner's business but um, equally for those of you who live and work from home this could be um, an ideal home office space, um, it could be a hobbies room, it could be some form of 
games room for the kids. Um, alternatively, there's a lot of conversion potential here as well, and the building could convert into a little Airbnb style holiday let unit or as a little um, annex to the main house if you wanted to go that route as well. Now, obviously, there may need to be some consent from a planning point of view to enable you to do that. The building it has its own um, electricity and water supply and has got drainage all plumbed in and ready as well. As you'll see, uh, there is a shower room actually in the building. So um, I shall give you the guided tour of this building now because this really does add a different dimension to this fantastic house. So just heading through the um, main entrance to the studio building here, you'll see this large um, main sort of open plan room and it really is a good size um, you know you'll see there's plenty of space in here now as I said outside um, the current owners use this as part of their own um, sort of business plans um, but you know it would make a fantastic home um, office area and it's nice to actually have the home office area away from the main house because it does almost feel like you're going to work in the morning even though you're only walking across the garden to gain access to your office. Um, so as I say, a variety of different options and um, purposes for this unit. And um, if this was all converted, you know, into a little Airbnb holiday let style unit, um, there would be a good bit of space in here. You know, this would be a great sort of open plan living kitchen sort of dining space in here. So I'll just pan around there again just to give you the idea. Now you see the uh, door going through down into the other two rooms here. Um, we've got uh, this particular room here. So again, as I say, it's all laid out for the owner's current purpose. Um, but a good bit of space here. And actually the view looks straight down the valley from here is really quite something. Uh, you'll see the sea off in the distance there. You can see the white caps on the waves there today. It really is an incredible spot here. And um, you know, you look out from any of the windows from this building onto the various different parts of the garden. Now, um, I mentioned again outside that there was a full shower room actually in this property. So um, there it is. Um, so shower room and toilet. Um, so if this was being used as a separate annex or an Airbnb style unit, you know, you have got all of the plumbing and facilities here. Um, so mains electric, uh, you've got water supply and drainage as well. So really, really handy. Um, and, um, you know, it uh, opens up the options even further for this unit. So I'll just give you one last look out into the main room again. And um, we'll just head outside and just show you how the studio sits in relation to the house. There's the house there, look. So it's literally just a few yards walk down to the house. So there we are, that concludes our tour of the studio building. Okay, there we are. That is the full tour now around um, Peggy's, both internally and externally, and of course of the um, excellent uh, studio building, which opens up a few more options there as well. So um, what we want to do next is just show you a little bit more information about the uh, local area. Uh, I'm just going to uh, pause this a second. Um, and um, yeah, the local area is uh, a, a lovely place to explore. There's lots and lots to see and do throughout North Devon. Um, there's obviously, of course, a fantastic beach at Woolacoon, but there's so much more than that uh, on your doorstep. And Peggy's is uh, perfectly positioned to deal with all of that and uh, you know go out to and explore from. So uh, I shall just uh, set that up now and we'll get uh, the local area video uh, playing for you and uh, it'll just give you a little bit more for those of you who aren't familiar with the area uh, as to what we've got to offer down this way.
benefit um, of what the immediate area around Woodham Mill uh, has to offer. And of course, there's a lot more um, further afield in North Devon as well. So it's a great part of the world to come and live and uh, you know enjoy a new and different lifestyle. Peggy's is certainly perfect for that change of lifestyle, as I say, perfect for those who live and work from home. Now, uh, the final bit I just want to talk about is uh, just the option of, of potentially holiday letting. Um, I mean, the property is perfect with the family home, but uh, ideally, you know, it could be um, used for a holiday let as well. So um, I'll just get some figures up on the uh, screen here in a second, which just relates to the um, holiday let side of things. Uh, and that will give you um, an idea of what uh, you might be able to expect there if you wanted to you know, go down that road. Um, so uh, there we are, let me just uh, get that fully up. Good, okay. So um, just with potential holiday let figures there, now these are projections, so obviously they're not um, actual figures necessarily, but uh, it just gives you an idea of what you could expect from a house of this sort of size if you decided to go down the holiday let route. Now, of course, that circa 70,000 figure will depend on how often you decide to let it and of course repeat things um, will be crucial to that as well and then down here look we've just got a little bit of an idea as to um, what your low season weekly rates your mid-season weekly rates and your peak season weekly rates would potentially achieve if you wanted to go that road so it's a tidy um, sum of money that you could uh, you know generate from the property and it can be quite a lucrative um, option for some people. Obviously, if it's a holiday home, you use it yourself certain times of the year, and it can then uh, bring in a tidy little income for the remaining time when you're not actually using it. Now, bespoke quotations can be um, made available upon request. You know, again, there are ways of um, changing and adapting the property, um, adding various bits to it, you know, like hot tubs and those sorts of things, which will all affect the number of weeks that you book and the potential income that you can achieve. But it just gives you a broad idea as to where those figures uh, might take you. Um, so really that sort of gets towards the end of our um, presentation now. And I think, um, you know, there's an awful lot to see and take in there. Um, this presentation is being recorded and um, we will be able to sort of repost that and send that back out to all of our participants today and also back out to people that may be um, interested. Of course, there may well be questions that you have that you want to fire to us. Now, if, with that in mind, if anybody has got any questions, you know, we are at that final part of the uh, uh, presentation now where questions and answers can be um, you know, given. Um, if there are any, now's the time to fire them up on your, um, uh, on your screens there, and I will do my best to answer those for you. Um, if there aren't any, that probably means that uh, you've covered uh, most of the detail, which will be great. Um, but of course, as always, if there's anything that you do think of uh, following this presentation, we would love to help and give you any further information that we can uh, that might help with your decision to uh, go further with Peggy's. So no further questions by the looks of it. Um, no, if that's the case, then I'd just like to say once again, thank you for giving up the valuable time this evening and uh, joining in with the presentation. Uh, and I hope you found it um, useful and informative. Um, just to sum up then, Peggy's is a fabulous um, five bedroom family home. It's got the annex potential there, which gives you the option for dependent relative, teenage children, Airbnb style um, letting. Of course, the studio area offers that additional dimension as well for live and work from home type of scenarios. Again, it could be a conversion into an Airbnb style unit subject to any planning consent. Now we had a good wander around the gardens, you know, just under an acre of ground there. Of course, you've got those fabulous views down over the valley with Willacombe Bay and the beach being just a short stroll away. So lots and lots to offer. Brilliant as a family home, potential as a holiday let if you wanted to go that route. Um, so please do contact us. Um, our office telephone number is 01 271 863091 and we would love to talk to you about Peggy's or arrange a full and physical viewing for you. So please do contact us if that's something that interests you. Thanks once again, and uh, I will now say good night. <laughs>